Hey guys, Marcel here and today I'm going to share everything that I learned in the past six to seven years of color grading videos. I'm gonna share my whole workflow from beginning to end, all the tools that I'm using, my favorite lots, and most importantly, everything about basic color theory that I think all filmmakers should know. So as you saw from the title, I'm going to do all this in Premiere Pro because I still use it for like 70 to 80% of my projects, but most of the things I'm going to talk about can apply to all editing software so even if you're not using Premiere Pro right now I still think there's a bunch of important information for you but all right let's stop wasting time and jump into Premiere so we can get started so the first thing we need to do is set up our workspace our working environment now Premiere Pro already has some preloaded workspaces and there's one called color which is a pretty great starting ground but we will need to modify this so let's start that by removing everything that we want need. So in the top left corner we have a couple of tabs, we have our source monitor, we definitely want to keep that, we have our lumetri scopes and our effects controls, we definitely want to keep these as well. But we have two more, our audio clips mixer and the text editor and yeah we will remove these because we won't use these for color grading. Moving down we have a couple more tabs and from here I usually like to remove the history panel, the mark Markers, the libraries and also the media browser because I just never used these during the color grading process. Moving towards the timeline we have our audio meters next to the timeline and we just want to minimize it because we won't be using this during the color grading. Above the timeline we have our program monitor and below this we have a couple of really useful buttons but the two most important that we're gonna use for color grading are the comparison view and the global effects mute. If you don't already have these buttons you can easily add them with this plus icon and then you can just drag and drop them. Moving on to the right side of our screen we have our Lumetri panel and this is where we're gonna do all our color correction and color grading but besides this we have two more tabs, the essential graphics and the essential sounds tab, which we absolutely don't need for color grading, so I'm just gonna quickly close these. Now that we have our workspace set up, we can start importing our clips and we can start talking about the basics of this whole color grading workflow. So in color correction, color grading, your main goal is to create contrast by adjusting your luma values, bringing your shadows down, your highlights up and creating contrast in the brightness levels of your image and also by adjusting your saturation and hue values to create color contrast, draw your audience attention to the right place and just create a visually pleasing image. There are many ways you can do this, there's a bunch of freedom in color grading, there are different workflows for example for 8-bit, 10-bit or raw footage, but there's a basic workflow that applies to all scenarios and all footage. So what is the correct workflow? Well your first step should always be your base corrections, correcting your exposure, your white balance, maybe some secondaries to make sure that none of your highlights are blown, none of your shadows are are crushed and just overall creating a general Rec 709 look. Your second step should always be color matching or shot to shot matching and this is when you're matching the exposure and saturation levels across multiple clips that are in the same location or same scene and doing this will make the grading process a lot easier. The third and final step is the actual color grading when you're applying the final look to the whole sequence and you can do this by hand or by using a lot uh, lookup table. So yeah, this is the basic workflow of color grading any footage, but obviously there are many different ways you can do each step, so let's jump back into Premiere Pro and I will show you everything. So I imported and prepared three groups of clips here. In the first group we have some 8-bit footage that I shot in a somewhat standard or neutral picture profile. In the second group we have some 10-bit footage that I shot in a complete log picture profile and in the third group we have some raw footage that I shot on my red Komodo. Now what does this all mean 8-bit, 10-bit, raw? Well these are basically indicators of how much detail and color information your footage can hold and these numbers are quite important for color grading because
because you obviously can't push an 8-bit footage as far as you can, for example, 16-bit RAW footage. So you can do basically whatever you want with 16-bit RAW, but you do have some limitations with all the other ones that you need to calculate with when you start grading them, but I will show you in a minute. So let's jump back into Premiere and let's start with color correcting our 8-bit footage. So since I shot this footage in a standard slash neutral picture profile, I already have some great contrast and saturation in the image, but I obviously want to tweak this a bit more and I'm gonna start that in the basic corrections panel. But before that, I'm gonna set up my Lumetri scope so I can actually see what I'm doing. So setting up your scopes is pretty easy. You can just right click and add or remove different scopes. My two favorites are the waveforms and the vector scope and I do like to use my waveform in the RGB mode so I can actually see the colors and I also like to select my color space here which is Rec 709 usually. If we come down we have two more settings here, our clamp signal which should always be selected and we also have a drop down menu where we can choose from 8 bit, 10 bit, float and HDR mode. I think it's pretty self explanatory, you want to use 8 bit for 8 bit footage, 10 bit for 10 bit footage and float for raw footage that is 12, 14 or 16 bit raw. So now that we have our scope set up I can finally start color correcting this footage and I'm gonna start this with correcting the white balance. Now she's wearing white hoodies so it will be pretty easy. After the white balance I'm gonna add some more contrast to this footage and I'm gonna do that by closely watching the waveform to make sure that I'm not blowing any highlights and I'm also not crushing any shadows. Well, we, maybe we can crush just a little bit. No one will notice that. <laughs> and also add a little bit of saturation, like maybe 110, 115. Let's leave it at 105, because we will also apply a lot and that will add some saturation, I think. After this, there's one little trick I like to do with all my footage, and that is in the curves panel. Now with the curves, you can also adjust the contrast, but you can do this by the individual channels, red, green, and blue as well, which is pretty cool. But we're not gonna touch this one just right now. The one that I'm looking for is the Luma versus saturation curve. Now with this curve, I can actually control the saturation of different different brightness levels of my image and by just moving and dragging this part down and this part down I can easily eliminate all colors from my deepest blacks and my whitest whites from the image. At the basic corrections panel we already made sure that we have true blacks and true whites in our image and this is a nice little trick to neutralize these colors because with many cameras and picture profiles there will be some colors in these parts of the image and I just don't like it and I think it looks a lot better if you eliminate all the colors from the deepest blacks and the brightest brights of your image. Now at this point I don't want to do more corrections to this footage so I'm gonna just close this and the next step would be the color matching, the shot to shot matching. Now I do have a really similar clip right next to it and what I usually do is just copy paste the whole Lumetri effect and then tweak it from there a little bit if I need to. I usually need to, but in this case it's basically the same shot, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. But we will talk about shot to shot matching with the other clips. So now that we have our basic corrections done and also our shot to shot matching, which I didn't really have to do this time, now we can start by developing the final look. And for this, I'm gonna create an adjustment layer and just name it 8 bit lot and I'm gonna drag it over my two clips. I always use adjustment layers for color grading because it's a lot easier to edit it when I apply it to multiple clips and also it's just nicely separated from my color corrections. So now that I have this adjustment layer on I just need to go into the creative menu and then go to browse my lot. I have all my lots in my sets and video and lot and for this I think I'm gonna apply 
like a really subtle teal and orange look. Now, as you can see, the lot is pretty subtle, but we will need to tweak this. So I actually want to bring down the saturation just a little bit. Maybe to like, nope, but maybe to like nine, nah, 95 was great. 95, I think it's great. So as I said before, I don't wanna do two crazy color grades to this 8-bit footage, cause it can break pretty easily. But yeah, I think we achieved a pretty good look with some basic corrections and a really subtle lot. Let's move on to the 10-bit footage where we can get into some of the more interesting stuff. So with the 10-bit footage, I actually brought two different different styles, one like daylight sunset vibes and another low light evening vibes. So we can experiment with different techniques, but yeah, let's start with the sunset vibes. So the first step here again is to do all the basic corrections and transform this look footage into a general Rec. 709 look. And for this, I'm gonna use a conversion lot this time just to show a different method. So I actually have these lots uh, that will transform this vlog footage into uh, an airy Alexa color space, which I really, really like. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly apply that daylight linear and boom we already have a pretty good looking image now obviously we need to tweak it a bit more so I'm gonna actually make this slot a little bit less strong maybe around like yeah, maybe around like 70%, sounds good. I'm gonna start with the white balance again, and I'm pretty lucky because I have this white wall here, which I can sample, but this time it went a little bit too far, so I'm actually going to just dial it back because I still wanna keep that sunset former look just with the more neutralized colors so I can do the grade on it. I think like a minus 10 plus one looks awesome. All right, so again, I'm gonna look at my waveforms and add a little bit more contrast to this image. Bring down the shadows a little bit, bring up the white so it looks like the sun is really powerful. Let's keep this at 30. All right, so we have our basic corrections done. I'm gonna jump into the curves menu and I'm gonna again do this little trick with the Luma slash saturation curve. Let's jump into the basic corrections and I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation. Let's keep it like 110 and then we can add more saturation in the color grading process. Our next step will be correcting the skin tones and this is a pretty fun one. So in the HSL secondary panel you can actually sample different colors from the scene and tweak those colors individually which is pretty cool so for this I'm gonna create an opacity mask around this guy's skin tones so I can isolate it like that we only have the skin tone in this uh, mask now we can jump back to the HSL secondary now remember we're gonna remove this mask uh, when we are done we are just doing this so we can isolate the colors in the vector scope so here I'm gonna sample his skin just make sure to do all of it and here I wanna open this so I can see the shadows the midtones and the highlights as well as you usually like to start with adding a little bit more to the midtones and highlights and bringing down the shadows to create more contrast on the skin. So my Lumetri scopes weren't refreshing but now they did so we can actually see just the skin tones and as you can see we have it kinda sitting on that line and I do want to add a little bit of warmth to it. And also bring down the green so it sits just right on the middle of that line. 
So yeah, I think we are done with the basic corrections for this clip. Now we can move on to the shot to shot matching. As I said before, the first thing I like to do is copy my whole Lumetri uh, settings to all of my other clips. So now that we have the Lumetri effect copied to all the other clips, I will open my compression view so I can see the actual difference between the two clips. And here I'm noticing that I will need to tweak the skin tones and also uh, some of the other settings so let's jump back into the skin tones first as you can see we already have them selected pretty nicely because they are really close to the other ones but I do wanna add some brightness to the mid tones and highlights bring down the shadows a little bit and maybe bring a little bit more green to it so I can neutralize it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it around like 25. I think that looks much better. Now with this clip, there's also a little bit of spill of this whole selection on her pants. So I do want to eliminate that. But yeah, otherwise I think we are done with the skin tones. Let's compare it a little bit. I might wanna add a little bit of more warmth to the whole image. Maybe we can put, it, put this to zero. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good match. All right, let's move on to the other clips. Here we have some skater guys jumping on the skateboard. So I don't wanna mess with the skin tones here that much, but I do wanna tweak them just a little bit so we don't have that much spill with it. Uh, yeah, I think that looks great. I'm gonna bump this up, maybe put this down and I'm gonna actually put it to minus five plus ten. Yep, I think it's a great middle ground. I think that looks good. Maybe a little bit more. Minus three. Yeah, all right, let's leave it like this. For this one, I'm gonna start with the HSL secondary again. I do wanna tweak them a little bit, make them a little bit brighter, crush the shadows a little bit more, and so yeah. Maybe pull the green down a little bit so we can neutralize that pink tint on the whole image. Yep like that. I'm gonna also pull down the saturation just a tiny bit and with the white balance I do wanna make it warmer but also a bit greener. I think we match these shots pretty well together. So yeah, we have all these shots matched together. So now again, I need to add another adjustment layer where we can apply the final look to the whole image. I'm gonna call this 10 bit what? And just drag it over all four clips. So for the final grade for these shots, I'm actually going to do it by hand instead of using a lot because I think these shots are already really close to what I want. So let's start off by jumping into the curves and let's put in some a little bit more contrast and make the highlights roll off a bit stronger. Mm, let's jump into the color wheels and here we can really do some grading. I'm gonna put some greens into the shadows and put some oranges into the midtones and some orange to reds in the highlights. And already we have a pretty nice grade. I think I'm gonna get back a little bit from these greens and I'm also going to push these a little bit to highlights. So I don't think I wanna do too much more to these clips, but I think I'm gonna add a little bit more warmth to the temperature and maybe push a little bit of magenta into the whole image so we don't have that big of a green tint, we only have the green in the shadows. And yeah, 
I think these shots turned out pretty great. Now we didn't have any crazy blown out highlights or crash shadows in these images, they were all nicely lit, shot with great settings, so we didn't have to do our magic there. But yeah, I think these shots turned out great, we can do the before and after look, and yeah, I think it's great. Uh, let's move on to the nighttime shots. So for these I'm gonna start off with the same thing and first convert my footage into a Rec 709 look. Uh, just go here, Alexa, that color, and yep. And again, I think I will take a little bit back from this around like 70% and then I'm gonna just copy and paste it to all the other clips. Yep, that's it. Here I don't think I will need to correct the color temperature, maybe later if I really want to mess with the skin tones, but this seems pretty accurate. So yeah, let's bring up the, the highlights. Let's bring up the whites as well. Let's bring our shadows down around here let's keep it at minus 25 let's keep them at minus 15 just for now again i'm gonna go down here and get all the colors out from my deepest blacks and whitest white i think we have a pretty neutral looking image i might add a little bit of color to it uh, let's keep it 120 and we will add more color if we need to in the grading part i'm gonna jump into my curves and add a little bit of to the highlights and make this curve yeah that seems great and here i think i will use some secondary corrections and jump in and select the skin tones so we can work on those a little bit i'm gonna select this as well and this as well and from here uh, we can add some more contrast to them so the faces will pop out a bit more and i also want to add a little bit of warmth to it all right I think that's great. Not too much, not too little, but we do have the skin tones popping just a tiny bit more. So let's move the whites a little bit, maybe around like, uh, let's keep it like plus 20. We need to brighten up our blacks a little bit and also our shadows. All right, that already looks a lot better. And with the curves, I'm just gonna leave the curves like this. Yeah, all the other things I think look great. We will do some more grading to it, obviously. But for now, they look pretty nice. And here we have a really bright flare in the hands of this guy, uh, which blows out his face a lot of times and everything. Can't really do too much to it because the footage is blown out actually, so we can't really bring that back. But we can make it less noticeable, so I will, I will play around with these a little bit. I think I'm gonna leave this here plus five to the temperature. Now that we have a really nice contrast uh, on this clip, the only thing left to do is to correct the hue and color temperature of this flare, because I don't like this pinkish color. I think in real life it was red. So yeah, it needs to be red. I want it to be red. <laughs> so for this, I'm just gonna use the HSL secondary tool again and just go around and select everything that is connected or it is or everything that is hit by this flare and then we just need to push it towards red push the highlights towards red and i do wanna get a little bit of saturation back yeah i think we successfully changed this flare from like a really bluish magenta into more like a warm red but it will look better once we add the grade and more saturation to the image and the only thing left now is to add the adjustment layer stretch it across 
all the clips and start creating this footage. I'm gonna do all this with hand. So first I'm gonna go into the curves and add just a tiny bit to the highlights. So the roll off is a bit smoother. And for the next step, I'm going to add some more saturation to the image somewhere around like 115 looks Great. Let's go next into the color wheels again and tweak the colors here a little bit. Now with these shots I do want to add some blue into the shadows and push some orange and yellow and red into the highlights and midtones. And now we can really see that red glowing. Yep. So yeah, overall I think these clips turned out pretty great. I didn't do anything crazy to them. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the final group, which are the row clips that I shot with my Red Komodo. So with these row clips, the workflow is a little bit different because we do have the options to do non-destructive adjustments to these clips. So yeah, we will need to start with those first. So we can access the row settings by going into the effect controls and then going to source and here we have all the settings that red provides us since this is a red code row footage so we can change our iso our white balance here and it really behaves like if we changed it in camera when we were shooting so for example if i changed my iso to 3200 and go back to the limitry panel to bring down for example my iso it will exactly behave like it was shot at 3200 and nothing really will happen to that clip so let's bring this back a little bit maybe at 400 yeah I do want to make this a little bit more brighter and since red cameras uh, don't have a native ISO you don't have to be afraid to only choose like 800 and 1600 or 3200 because those are the cleanest ISOs all of them are exactly as clean obviously as you go up the scale it will become noisier and I'm also gonna change my color temperature what let's say 6800 is what i want as you can see i already have a lot selected here and red does this automatically when you import the footage right now i have one on with medium contrast and soft size size means the highlight roll off so since I don't want to do more to my row settings now, I can jump back into the basic correction panel and start my process there. So I'm gonna start by setting my scopes to float and I actually forget to do it with the previous clips with the 10-bit clips. I was using it in an 8-bit mode, which is it's all right, but not ideal. So yeah, you always wanna change your scope settings and don't forget it. But yeah, I'm gonna set it to float now. So here I wanna raise my highlights a little bit, crash my shadows. Maybe run minus 35 looks great. Let's push my whites up by not maybe like plus 20. And let's bring our blacks down to, let's keep it at minus 15, sounds good. Let's go to our curves and do this little trick again, Luma versus saturation, great. For the next, I'm gonna go into the HSL secondary, uh, select my skin tones here so I can adjust them. All right, let's add some denoise, some blur, bring some more contrast to them and add a little bit of warmth to it and also some magenta let's keep it like 15 too all right so i think we managed to improve our skin tones a lot uh, maybe we can bring them down just a tiny bit more i think these look 
great. I don't wanna do too much more to this shot right now. All right, so, 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 let's do the basic corrections again for these clips as well. Now we already have our settings imported from the first clip and I think we only need to tweak it a little bit. I do wanna make this super white. 50 minus 35. Uh, now for this shot, I do wanna go back to the row settings because I forgot to raise my ISO. Well, let's do 500. 500 sounds great. Uh, let's make sure to bring down our shadows, bring down our blacks. Let's move on to this jumping shot. Uh, here I do wanna go back again and change the ISO to around, let's go with 400 and go back to the basic settings, raise our highlights again, like 75, bring down our shadows like 70, let's make it 35 and bring down our blacks like a lot, like 75. Now I do wanna do one more thing here. I see a lot of like red and weird artifacts in the trees at the back. So I do wanna hop into the hue and saturation and I wanna select these trees and just make it less saturated like this. And voila, we eliminated that weird artifact. I think that was IR pollution, I'm not sure. So now that we have all our clips color corrected, we set all our row settings correctly, our ISO, our white balance, so everything is nice and neutral. And now we can go on to developing the look for all these clips. And again, I'm gonna do that by right click, new item, adjustment layer, create it, and I'm gonna name it row lot, and I'm gonna bring it over all these clips. Next, I'm gonna go into the creative tab again and go to browse. And here I wanna go, hmm, let's find a good lot for this. Uh, Let's go into my action lots cube. Let's go for standard because we did transform it to a rec 709 kind of color space. I think the John Wick lot will work for this pretty well. Uh, and yeah, it's not too strong. It looks kind of stylish. Let's desaturate the whole image just a tiny bit. So this already looks pretty good, but I want to tweak this just a little bit more. I'm gonna go into my color wheel settings and here I want to add a bit of green to the shadows and a bit of blue to my midtones and actually a little bit of yellow into my highlights kind of to neutralize it. So yeah, I think these shots turned out pretty great. They are really consistent. And yeah, I think this John Wick lot turned out really well with a little bit of tweaking. For the actual commercial I did for Xiaomi, I actually went with a not so stylish, a little bit more subtle grade, but I think this looks great as well. Overall, I think these clips turned out great and I hope you learned something. I try to stay general with this whole tutorial, but I am planning to show some more advanced techniques, both in color grading and color correction in the future. So you might wanna keep an eye out for that. One last thing I wanted to add is, although this is like the professional way or the basic workflow of doing color grading, there are situations, for example, when you're doing a lot of social media content or projects with really fast turnarounds, when you will be better off just developing your own lots and doing like a drag and drop system where you only need to drop this lot on, maybe tweak a little bit on the white balance and maybe some contrast or and some minor things, but then you're good to go and you don't need to go through all these steps. 
So yeah, this is the professional workflow, but when time is king, there are ways you can do it a lot faster. But no matter how fast you're editing, you always wanna leave some time to use your scopes. And yeah, you always wanna use them because your screen can easily fool you anytime and it takes basically no time to just take a look and adjust your settings according to that. If you do all these steps that I talked about in this video, it will be definitely harder to mess up your shots. Not impossible, still there's a bunch that need to be learned about color correction and color grading, but yeah, definitely harder. I think that was it for today. Let me know if you liked this video, drop a like or a dislike if you hated every single minute of it. Or if you have a more complex opinion, leave a comment down below and I will try my best to answer every single one of them. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this and I will see you guys next week.